Over the last few years, a time-lapse technique called hyperlapsing has become very popular. This is the way to create a moving time-lapse with just a camera and a tripod. Usually, to create a moving time-lapse, you would need a motorized dolly system, like this. But this can be quite expensive and cost you thousands of dollars. So, if you're on a budget, hyperlapsing can be a quite good solution. But it is quite difficult to get it right. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how I do it to make it a little easier for you. So here's how I created this hyperlapse from the start to the finish. I'm here at the scene where I'm gonna shoot this hyperlapse. I have my camera set up here on a tripod. Uh, there are no real requirements for the camera itself, but it helps if you can do live view. Uh, I'll show you why soon. I have a remote connected for the intervals, the same as you would use for a regular time lapse. Uh, only costs a few bucks on uh, eBay or Amazon. This particular lens is a 17 to 40 millimeter f/4L. Uh, the focal length of your lens should be greater than about 25 millimeter. I usually shoot it somewhere between 25 and 30 millimeter. This is because if you shoot it wider than this, it can cause distortion in the edges of the pictures that makes it difficult to stabilize this in post. When it comes to the settings of your camera, it should be whatever suits your scene best. I always shoot in RAW, and there's one thing I want to mention, and that's the shutter speed. I always try in time lapses and hyperlapses to keep the shutter speed at one second or longer. This is to create some sort of a motion blur in the pictures and this will make the final video look a lot more smooth. At night time like this it's no problem but at daylight it can be a problem to achieve a shutter speed of one second or longer. So I always use a ND filter. This particular one is a ND 3.0 which is very very dark. With this you can achieve anywhere between one second and thirty seconds exposure at broad daylight. So it's really useful when you shoot hyperlapses lapses and also regular time lapses. So let's start with the real thing here, which is the movement of the camera itself. I always use the tripod's legs to help me to move the camera in the right positions. It's really important that you take into account the ground. You can't really get good hyperlapses out in nature. It's much better to do it on something man-made, like asphalt, cobblestone, something similar to this. This is perfect because I can use the stones as sort of guidelines to where to move my tripod. I never measure up the distances between my shots like I've seen others do. I find it more crucial to have the camera in the right angle. I use live view to try to get the shots as similar to each other as possible. I set my lens to manual focus to get up this rectangle on the screen. I set one of the edges or corners of the rectangles up against a reference point in the frame that I want to keep steady, like I'm now doing with this particular building right here. Then you will always make sure that this is aligned between all the shots. The shutter speed here is set to 3 seconds, but you also have to give yourself some time to move the camera between each shot. I usually give myself about 10 seconds, that should give you plenty of time to move the camera. So on the interval you will put 3 plus 10 seconds, which is 13 seconds in my case. When it comes to how long you should keep going, I usually say that about 120 shots is enough for a hyperlapse. At 24 frames per second that should give you about 5 seconds of video. To calculate for how many minutes you have to keep taking pictures, you can use this simple formula. You take the amount of shots, which in my case is 120, multiply by the interval 13 and divide by 60. This means that I have to keep going for about 26 minutes. So now I'm ready to start the hyperlapse. I'm now finished with the shots and now the computer work starts. The first thing you of course want to do is to import the photos. I prefer to use Lightroom for time lapses and it's considered to be the best option. So let's start. First, I pick one of the photos and go into the develop module. 
here I added some of the colors. Make it a little bit brighter, uh, some more contrast, fill in some shadows. The clarity I'll pump up a little bit and some colors. Make it a little bit more purplish, I think. So I think that's that's pretty good. So I'll apply this settings to all the other photos as well. So what I do is to uh, mark all uh, the photos by doing Command A or Control A on a PC. Then I click Sync Settings, uh, make sure everything is checked, and then click Synchronize. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And then I'll export the photos by clicking here, Export. Um, a Lightroom export, make sure it's uh, the full size images uh, and just click export. So now my images are all exported with the adjustments and I have opened After Effects where the stabilizing is gonna happen. So the first thing I'll do is import uh, the sequence into uh, After Effects by double clicking here. Um, and I'll mark the first image, make sure that JPEG sequence is, is checked and click open. When I mark this uh, sequence, you can see that it says 24 frames per second. Uh, this should be the same uh, frame rate that you want in the end. So if it's not what you want, uh, right click here, interpret footage main and uh, assume this frame rate, you put what you want. When you're done with that, just drag the sequence down here to create a new composition. You go over here and search for Warp Stabilizer and you drag that onto your sequence right here. Uh, then this will uh, analyze and stabilize it and this can take a few minutes. So now the movie is finished exported from After Effects. So I opened Final Cut Pro where I'm editing my final output video. It's only available for Mac, but you could use uh, Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere, uh, something similar. As far as I know, the After Effects Warp Stabilizer is the only one uh, that can really stabilize hyperlapse footage properly. Uh, now I'll put it down to my, my timeline here um, and I will resize it to fit the, the HD aspect ratio, the 16 by 9 because images are usually something like 4 by 3 uh, so I'll make it a little bigger I think this is okay I'll just wait for it to render. So I think that should cover it all. Be sure to check out my website for more time lapses and hyperlapses at rustamedia.com or facebook.com slash rustamedia. Uh, I hope you learned something and good luck with your hyperlapsing. Everything is still speeding up The shockwave left us in the dark